Now that we've seen how to define the curl of a vector field, we're going to introduce another operation on a vector field called divergence. So if f is a vector field p, q, r in three dimensions, its divergence, denoted by div f, or sometimes denoted by del dot f, So formally, it's the, the dot product of d by dx, d by dy, d by dz with pqr. So when you expand this, it is dp dx plus dq dy plus dr dz. So this is a function. So the curl of a vector field is a vector field. The divergence of a vector field is a function. And this definition makes sense in any number of dimensions. The, the curl is special to three dimensions because it uses the cross product. The divergence uses the dot product, which works in any number of dimensions. Now to get some idea of what this means, let's look at a couple of examples. So first, let's look at the divergence of the vector field x, y, z. All right, well, this is dx, dx plus dy, dy plus dz, dz, which is 3. If we switch the sign, so minus x minus y minus z, then we're just going to multiply everything here by minus 1, so the divergence is minus 3. In general, the divergence is a function. Here we're getting a constant, but in, if you have a more complicated vector field, the divergence will be a function. And an, another example, so there's this vector field minus y x0, so its divergence is d by dx of minus y plus d by dy, sorry, no, no, nothing there, d by dy of x plus d by dz of 0. That's just 0. Well, let's draw pictures of these vector fields. So in the first example, this is a vector field which is pointing away from the origin. And the further away you get from the origin, the bigger it gets. So it sort of looks like the origin is exploding, okay? And this is positive divergence. The, so this is this example, okay? Um, the second example, let's do it in green. So here, it's pointing towards the origin, and the further away from the origin you are, the bigger its magnitude is. So it looks like somebody's putting a vacuum cleaner at the origin and sucking everything up. And the third vector field, we've seen this one before. Um, so this rotates in the xy plane. Um, so it's a little hard to indicate that on the picture, but it, it's horizontal in the xy plane and rotates like this. And that in in other horizontal planes, it rotates the same way, right? So here, the divergence is positive, and it looks like it's exploding. Here, the divergence is negative, and it looks like it's contracting. And here, the divergence is zero, and it looks like it's rotating. The, the summary is that curl measures rotation. I mean, this is just intuition here. But the intuition is that curl measures rotation, and divergence measures expansion and compression. Okay, so expansion is, is in areas where the divergence is positive, and compression is in areas where the divergence is negative. 
So for example, suppose f is the velocity vector of the air in the room, or air in some space. Okay. Now, if it's not getting compressed, so if the pressure is, is staying the same everywhere, then the divergence will be zero. So now, if it's, it's getting compressed somewhere, so, so divergence is positive, or actually divergence is negative, where the pressure is increasing. Okay, so if you have some air here, it looks like this. Then you know air is being pushed into this air into this smaller area, and the pressure is going up, and, and divergence is greater than zero, where the pressure is decreasing. So that would be if air is while moving away from some area, then the pressure there is going to get lower, and divergence is equal to zero, where the pressure stays the same. So that's the that's the physical interpretation of divergence.